Gradient correction is a very complex problem that can never replace the acquisition of flat frames. In this image, in addition to having gradients from vignetting, the bad flats have also left many traces of the shadows of the dust motes. This is impossible to correct with gradient correction. If we applied the default parameters, there are still many residual gradients, and the remains of the shadows of the dust motes do not disappear. We can improve the result by using automatic conversions. This gives us a flatter image, although there are still gradient structures that could be corrected. Since we have edge effects at the top and bottom, we can try lowering the scale and smoothness of the model. This gives us a better corrected image. We can lower both values to the minimum if we want to correct even smaller structures. However, this does not solve the problem and the tool begins to overcorrect the galaxy. Gradient correction is not designed to correct these problems, so we can only hope for this type of correction. In this image, we have gradients that come from very severe light pollution. Furthermore, this ring is caused by a field corrector that is too small, causing a lot of vignetting and reflections in the optical train, so the gradients have very sharp edges. Let's start by turning off structure protection and applying the default values. With these values, the gradients are partially corrected. The most problematic areas are the left corners where the gradients are very bright. As they are small scale gradients, we can try to model them better by decreasing the scale parameter. If we compare with the previous result, Decreasing the scale better corrects the corners. However, they are not completely correct. Therefore, we are going to try activating automatic convergence. With three iterations, we improve the correction of these gradients. This is with the default parameters. This is by decreasing the scale. And this is with automatic convergence. We see that the corners have been corrected better but we have also begun to overcorrect the area in the center of the Pleiades. When we have such difficult cases with bright and complex gradients, we'll surely need to modify these two parameters. In this case, we are going to increase the high threshold. In this way, we will protect only brighter objects. By limiting the protection, the corners are completely corrected. With the default value, residuals of these gradients remained. Modifying this parameter has the drawback of causing a very severe overcorrection in the cluster as we are leaving all the weakest objects in the image unprotected. We can solve this by enabling structure protection. In this way, we prevent overcorrection. However, the gradient in the upper left corner appears again. If we generate the protective masks, we will understand the reason for this. In the masks, we can see that the Pleiades are protected, but also the upper left corner. If we increase the mask threshold to protect only brighter objects, we can avoid protecting the corner.
By modifying this parameter, we protect the Pleiades, but we do not protect the corners, so the gradient is much better corrected. The drawback is that increasing the threshold only protects the central areas of the nebulae. As a consequence, we have a slight overcorrection in the outermost parts of the nebulae. To expand the mask from the central areas, we can increase the amount parameter. Now the protected areas are larger, so we preserve the Pleiades nebulosity much better. This is the original image. This is with the default values. This is decreasing the scale. This is activating automatic convergence. This is increasing the high threshold. This is activating structure protection. This is increasing the mask threshold, and this is increasing the mask amount. Lastly, this image requires background neutralization. We will use the upper left corner as a background reference. Now, with a neutral background, we can see much better how the gradient correction has worked. With gradient correction, we can perform a very aggressive gradient correction to try to solve problems with flats, although it is not designed for this. Let's start with the default values, but disabling structure protection. As we can see, there are many residual gradients left. Since these gradients have a clear linear trend on the diagonal, we will enable the simplified model. We will use a second-degree polynomial because here, in the center, the gradient is not entirely linear but instead has a more abrupt change in illumination. Let's see if this helps correct the gradients. Compared with the previous result, the correction is now somewhat better. But here, it is clear that we need to model more complex gradients. Let's decrease the scale value. Now we correct the gradients much better, although there are still quite a few residual structures. Therefore, let's also try decreasing the smoothness. We can be aggressive in performing this correction because we only have the galaxy in the center. With larger and more diffuse objects, this task would be impossible. By decreasing the smoothness, we better correct the small structures of the gradients. We will have to be much more aggressive to correct these residual gradients because they are bright and very small scale. In this example, we need to modify these two parameters again. In this image, we will first try modifying high tolerance. This will allow us to apply less protection to the bright structures we are trying to correct. By modifying this parameter, we obtain a better correction, but there are still some weak residual gradients. We will try to correct these bright structures by applying this correction iteratively. Now, all the background structures have practically disappeared. As we perform a more aggressive correction, we begin to overcorrect the outermost areas of the spiral arms of the galaxy. Therefore, we activate structure protection. The latter doesn't seem to work well. This is because such complex and severe gradients also contain very bright structures. To isolate the core of the spiral galaxy from the rest of the image, we need to set the mask's threshold to its maximum value. This way, the mask only selects the galaxy's center and avoids leaving residues at the bottom. We can further improve the correction by only protecting the brightest objects. To do this, we increase this parameter to 0.3. 
With this very aggressive correction in the background, all the structures disappear. But we begin again to overcorrect the external areas of the galaxy. We can solve this by increasing the amount of the mask so that the area of the galaxy core selected in the mask expands outwards, covering the entire galaxy. This is with an amount of 0 0.5, and this is at 0 0.7. This is the original image. This is with the default values. This is with the simplified grade 2 model. This is the result of decreasing the scale. This by reducing the smoothness. This is by increasing the high tolerance value. This is with automatic convergence. This is activating the structure protection. This is increasing the threshold of the mask to 1. This is increasing the high threshold. And this is the result of increasing the amount of the mask. The examples in this video show that gradient correction can work in very adverse conditions, but it is always advisable to acquire good flats. In these circumstances, searching for the correct parameters becomes very complicated, making it difficult to work with the tool. Thank you.